Hi everybody, I'm Dr. YY Chong. I'm a cornea and refractive surgeon practicing in uh, KBJ Pusapaka Mata Centre for Sight. Uh, I would like to talk to you uh, the topic of cornea transplantation. Okay, so um, before I start to say what is cornea transplantation, I would like uh, you know, the audience to understand to know uh, what is cornea, where is cornea. Um, you, you can see from this uh, model eyeball, the front part, which is the transparent part of the tissue here, this is cornea. Okay, so cornea transplantation is a surgical procedure involving replacing this diseased cornea with a donated cornea tissue. Okay, <clears throat> so the tissue, the cornea tissue, actually come from uh, those people who pass away and donated their eye. Actually, when they donate their eye, the the part of the, the, the tissue that is used is actually the cornea only, okay? So the other part of the eyes are actually, uh, most, most of the time is not used for any uh, procedure. So um, replacing this cornea tissue is called cornea uh, transplant surgery. So in what type of condition that we need to uh, replace the cornea? Now, of course, obviously the most uh, uh, often and uh, frequent indication is when the cornea is diseased, is opaque, blocking the light from getting in. That's the main reason why we replaced the cornea tissue because the newly, newly replaced cornea is going to make this part clear again to allow light to be able to enter into the eye. Okay, So there are a number of indications uh, for this procedure. Firstly, um, cornea scarring. Say, you know, the cornea had injury before with an opacity blocking the light from getting in. Then the patient may need a transplant to replace the scar cornea to see better. Okay. Now the cornea also can be damaged during uh, a surgical procedure. Say for instance, uh, cataract surgery. One of the complications that can uh, happen in cataract surgery is damage to the cornea. Okay, so when that happens, again, you know, the cornea will be uh, uh, hazy or uh, not clear. That will definitely uh, that will also affect the, uh, the vision and that can be, again, uh, uh, resolved with a cornea transplantation. Um, the other indications are like uh, a diseased cornea such as keratoconus, whereby the cornea looks clear but the shape of the cornea is irregular and abnormal. So because of that, the eye also cannot see well because of the shape of the cornea is not normal. So the cornea also need to be replaced with a normal shape cornea in order to see better. Then there is also some uh, congenital or inherited kind of cornea problem that uh, present with a slowly and gradual worsening of the vision because the cornea becomes swollen, okay? Uh, conditions such as Fuchs dystrophy. This happens usually in elderly people, 50, 60 and above. Gradually, the vision will, will, will uh, impair because of the swelling of the cornea. The cornea becomes uh, hazy and block the light from getting in. So again, this can be uh, resolved with a cornea transplantation. Then next will be uh, infection, okay? Unfortunately, in some unfortunate cases whereby the, you know, like say for instance, uh, uh, contact lens infection, sometimes they can be very bad until the whole cornea get infected uh, or the, con the infection is, uh, you know, difficult to control. Then we have to do a surgery in order to replace the disease cornea for the patient to be able to see better, number one. Number two actually is also to remove all the infected infective material to control the infection. So the, the surgery is actually uh, not only aimed to improve the vision, but also aimed to save the eyes. So these are some of the uh, brief introduction on what is cornea transplantation. Now in recent years, here we are talking about the last 10 to 20 years, there are a lot of advancements when it comes to cornea transplantation. Okay, So we used to transplant the whole piece of cornea, <coughs> the, 
whole thickness, uh, the whole piece of cornea, to uh, in order for a patient to improve the vision uh, and also the structure. Nowadays, uh, we can do the surgery in uh, in, in a, a different format, different uh, manner, uh, depending on the the disease process of why the patient need to go for the surgery. Now, let's say for instance, just now when I say uh, there is a scarring in front of the cornea because of injury, then the surgery nowadays we can just do replacing the front part only. Okay, we don't take out the whole piece of cornea, but only the front part which is damaged, and then replace with a, a, a partial thickness of uh, donor tissue. Same thing if the the problem is because of the back part of the cornea that is damaged like in folk dystrophy or uh, the cornea becomes swollen because of a complication from cataract surgery. We also replace, we only replace the back part of the uh, cornea that is uh, damaged. Okay? By doing that, it has its advantage of you know, reduce of risk of cornea rejection. The surgery is uh, usually more straightforward and the result is uh, better than a full thickness surgery because uh, it's carried out in a more controlled fashion. The, the, the ability of us to be able to do this kind of procedure is because uh, advancement in the uh, uh, technique in doing the surgery, as well as the availability of uh, uh, micro instrument and equipments that allow us to cut the cornea into different, different layers so that we can transplant the tissue according to what actually is damaged in the patient's uh, cornea. Okay, so uh, after the, the, the surgery itself, actually most of the time, uh, the surgery can be done under local anesthesia and it, you know, it takes usually about between half an hour to one and a half or even up to two hours, depends on the complexity of the surgery. Um, so the surgery will take that long only, but it's the recovery and aftercare that is actually important to a uh, patient when they need to go for this kind of surgery. That's because uh, once the eye is transplanted with donor tissue from other people, they will need a frequent follow-up and uh, 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 some medication, at least probably one year or longer, huh, to prevent rejection and to prevent other problems. Okay? So after care of, of uh, cornea transplantation is, is a lot more important than the actual surgery. Okay? So, uh, um, the patient who had this kind of surgery must follow instruction closely in how to use their medication and also must continue in seeing the surgeon or any eye specialist who you know can do the follow-up in a regular fashion for at least a year or more okay they can't just uh, have the surgery done and then that's it you know not not in that manner then if they do something like that the the transplanted tissue can can fail or rejected and then everything will go back to the square one. Okay, so the aftercare is the most important when it comes to cornea transplantation, and patient got to understand that uh, it's not just one off thing, but it's a long term uh, 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 care that they need to uh, uh, take, so that uh, you know they can have a good vision for longer duration. Yeah. They are patient who you know uh, frequently they they like to know whether. The eye can accept the tissue or not. Now, uh, as you can see, you know, cornea is a transparent tissue. There's no vessel in most cases, so the risk of rejection, as compared to other organ transplantation, is a lot, a lot lower. So most most of the time, the patients do not require any uh, systemic. That means orally, they do not have to take any medicine to prevent the rejection. But still, rejection can happen anytime. Okay, so that's why, as I said earlier. They have to use some kind of drops. The doctor, of course, will advise you what drop to use. That is to firstly to prevent infection. Secondly, there will be drop to use at least one year or longer to prevent rejection. Okay, so the frequency and the dosage of the medicine is very crucial and very important. And each and individual is maybe different. Huh? Depend on the severity, the complexity of the surgery. So that's why I said again. Uh, it's very important to, to, to listen to the doctor, follow the instruction, how to take care of the eye after the surgery to prevent a, a rejection.
So, um, uh, KBJ Pusapaka Mata Centre for Sports Science is uh, one of the very few uh, private centres in the country that uh, perform cornea transplantation. Okay, uh, and also, uh, uh, okay, another new thing, another things that uh, we do in 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 our centre is that uh, we also perform co uh, this artificial cornea transplantation in some uh, very complex cases that. Uh, that uh, uh, require uh, uh, that may do better with an artificial cornea rather than a donor cornea tissue. Uh, in this aspect, of course, uh, these are complex cases, uh, but uh, you know, um, uh, if we are uh, here in, in this center. We is is one of the very very few in the country that will do perform uh, artificial cornea. For, the, for those patients who require this kind of procedure.